So good morning everyone and welcome to the weather briefing it's by Christina and by me. Uh, Christina is working at the moment for uh, UMETSAT in Germany. Um, so Christina will start with her presentation on a, f a flooding event in, on, on 12th November this month in Italy in Tuscany and I will continue after her presentation with two other topics. One is the same flooding event in Austria and uh, a cold air outbreak in the end of October. So Christina, the floor is yours. Uh, hello everybody. As Andrea as you have mentioned, my name is Christina Patraitita and usually I work as a weather forecast in Lithuanian Hydrometeorological Service, but at the moment, uh, starting from the 1st of November, I'm a graduate trainee at UMATSAT. And today I'm going to talk about upper level trough cutoff low over northern Africa and flood in Tuscany on the 12th of November. So, uh, to start with, I hope all of you can see this air mass NGB and at first look what I'm interested in it. So, first of all, there is a deep trough uh, uh, here, five to the uh, to, to, to the uh, south of, uh, nor uh, of uh, to the south and over the northern Africa and the other thing what I'm really interesting in and what I'm actually going to focus on is this mesoscale convective system uh, over northern Italy. So there is one more air mass AGB and it was it's uh, one hour later and here it's overlaid with uh, height contours at three, 300 and so it proves what I was saying before that we have uh, a deep trough and uh, cut off low uh, over northern Af Africa and uh, over Morocco and still something interesting is going on over here over the region of Tuscany in northern Italy. Uh, so, uh, what happened on the 12th of November in Italy? And to start explaining this, I have borrowed some slides from Sheldon Kusselson from NOAA Satellite and Information Service. And uh, here we can see blended total precipitable water product. And why are we going some days back in time is that already uh, here on the 8th of November we can see that uh, some moisture which is really interesting uh, from south was approaching to the Mediterranean region and in some images like for example here at the 12th UTC of 11th of November or here at 0 UTC of 12th of November uh, these uh, black lines here indicates that there was so-called moisture plume or atmospheric river which means that moisture was uh, uh, was going in a narrow uh, way towards uh, uh, towards Italy and uh, here we can see actually the same product just in previous slide it was in millimeters and here we can see that values are in percents and usually it is that if value is above 175 percent so it's above normal and again in all these images we can see that uh, we have here some bluish colors and to, to dark blue and uh, also here and in some images for example here we can also see some yellowish colors which indicates that it was really above Madden. normal and there was a lot of moisture approaching to Italy. And the last slide uh, borrowed from Sheldon, uh, here we can see blended uh, uh, low earth orbit uh, uh, satellite instantaneous product and I think it really nicely uh, shows how the moisture was approaching to Italy and here we also have this uh, yellow circle and it indicates that caution heavy rain is approaching and it was on 6 UTC of 11th of November and six hours later so we already have this uh, uh, pinkish circle which is saying that heavy rain is here and so we can see for how long this heavy rain 
lasted and only on the 6th UTC of 13th of November we have this nice green uh, bubble which says heavy rain has ended. And I think all these products uh, would be very useful for the current situation as you in UK as Robert said that there are flash floods so I think it would be really uh, useful. So we had a lot of moisture and what we needed more it was unstable air and actually we had instability as well and as the fact is at level 2 and level 2 means that there were 15 percent probability of one or more reports of extremely severe weather within 40 kilometers of the point and their synopsis said that it was Egypt mainly for large hail, severe wind gusts and tornadoes and to a less extent for excessive precipitation and here in this air mass RGB we can see how this uh, level 2 region nicely surrounds our Tuscany region and here we can see one more image from the Estofex uh, webpage and again as, as I have mentioned we had a lot of moisture and we have we had instability and we can check it in, uh, and see that there was a shear between uh, 0 and 6 kilometers and it was about like uh, 15 or 20 meters per second of shear and also we had some uh, hundreds of capes so actually actually the weather was really unstable and one more proof uh, there is satellite information and it's enhanced infrared and we can see that this cloud over here in Tuscany was really high and it was really cold and uh, I would like to share the saying that bloody red means bloody cold so it was really bloody cold this uh, cloud and uh, one more I think really popular uh, uh, RGB image is severe storm RGB and again it's nicely shown that uh, there was a real severe weather over uh, here in Tuscany so now the main question why it happened in Tuscany why not uh, in some other places and first of all we had three so-called triggers and also we had an additional hill from the upper level trough uh, cutoff and that is why I have mentioned it in the in some of the first uh, slides so uh, to start with I would like firstly to divide these uh, triggers into two parts first of all it's upper levels and then what was happening in low levels and to start with upper levels there was this um, uh, subtropical uh, uh, jet stream which we can see here in this air mass RGB and so it was carrying moisture from the south across the Sahara it's really really interesting and also we had this additional power of this uh, cutoff over here in Morocco and what is also important that Tuscany was on the left uh, exit region of this jet stream and I guess everybody knows that uh, conditions on the left exit region of the jet stream is really good for severe weather to occur. So what uh, also we had here it was like two things but I would like to, uh, to, to join them so it was local intensification by small scale short wave uh, trough uh, over here and also we had a PVA anomaly which nicely contributed to upward motion and actually we can even track how this uh, PVA anomaly was traveling so at uh, here at 0 UTC we can see that it was 6 units and it was over here after another six hours it was already here and it was increased up to 18 and we see how, how big the contrasts are here and after another six hours it was already gone far to the north but well it was enough for our uh, Tuscany region and then what was happening in the low levels and in low levels there was surface wind convergence line which can be really nicely seen in this high resolution uh, visible image and to prove it that there was, there was really a convergence 
I have uh, taken some information from ePort online, and uh, here we have uh, infrared image of the 12th of November to 12th UTC, and it's overlaid with divergence at uh, 1000 uh, and also with uh, winds at 10 meters high, and so in region of our interest, it, it's here, we, we can see that here we had a wind blowing from south uh, east and here we can see already north wind or even uh, northwest so it was really a convergence and this nice red convergence line also proves what I'm saying and one more proof about convergence so we can see it here and it's a meteor sat 9 visible channel 0 0.8 and it's overlaid with a, a model field from ECMWF it's a wind set 10 meter and again in in our Tuscany region we can see how wind was uh, nice nicely converging so, and what were the results of this nice case study, if you're not Italian, I guess? So, heavy rain affected Tuscany and the neighboring Umbria region, and more than 200 people were evacuated, and four people, unfortunately, were reported to be killed. And rain amount, uh, from different sources, it varied from 200 and almost 69, 61, sorry, uh, up to 200 and almost 90 millimeters in 36 hours and actually yesterday when I checked all these sources one more time I, I found out that uh, also there was uh, one saying that uh, there were uh, 400 and even 15 millimeters in 36 hours and uh, also there was a hail report unfortunately there were no diameter or, or something like that and I have read the, that there were some strong winds but I haven't found uh, uh, the exact numbers of it and now why is this uh, thing in blue written also here it's actually I need to confess that I was a little bit confused why, while I was preparing this presentation because when I uh, looked for some photos from these flash floods there were, there were a lot of uh, photos of floods in the knees and for some time I thought that it's uh, the same thing from the same heavy rainfall but actually the the bigger uh, part here was played by uh, this south uh, south uh, east wind which uh, was blowing toward the knees and so it uh, a so-called aqua alta phenomena occurred and it's quite nice figures here because uh, the floods in the knees left uh, a city under the water 70 percent of city under the water and sea levels reached one and a half meter and it was the sixth highest water level since 1872 so and it was happening at the same time as the floods in uh, Tuscany and uh, to end I would like to show you some animation I hope all of you will see it uh, sooner or later and uh, there you will see uh, EMS uh, RGB overlaid with uh, infrared image and I think colors are we are not really used to the colors of, uh, like this but I guess it's re it really nicely shows how severe weather was uh, uh, going on over here over Tuscany and how it uh, just uh, renewed and renewed and renewed and uh, just like over Tuscany. So that is it what I wanted to say and thank you for your uh, for listening to me. Yes that's me. I'm working in Vienna, Austria in the satellite department and uh, I have picked out two phenomena which I want to speak on. Uh, the first is the early winter onset we experienced in Austria. It was end of, end of October 27 and 28 October and then the same event Christina was already speaking of, the heavy precipitation event in Austria mainly affecting the southern part 
of Austria. So after the last weather briefing, which was on 18th October, um, the, the weekend which followed was unusual warm. It was uh, all in all a very warm October, but in this weekend, uh, between 19th and 21 October, many stations uh, recorded uh, high, the highest ever measured temperatures. I have here a list of some stations. Um, the list is not complete. There are some, some more stations than this one. Uh, I picked out just the top of the list. And what you see is there are mostly stations in the, in the mountains. So you have, for example, the Feuerkogel in, in Upper Austria, which measured on the 19th 22.7 degrees, and this is much more than the previously recorded highest temperature of 21.4 degrees. And also in Salzburg, in Tyrol, Hanenkamm, this is a very famous skiing region in Austria, in Tyrol, where we recorded on that day uh, on the 19th 20.7 degrees, and this is much warmer than uh, the temperatures previously recorded. So there was, was an advection of quite warm air over Austria on that weekend. And we shall have a look at the e-port for Friday the 19th October 12 UTC. I picked out two images from e-port showing the synoptic situation on that day. And as you can see it, and I don't know if you ha had already a look at uh, today's images, satellite images, it's a very similar situation to, to today. So the 19th October is really a sister of today's situation. We have a tongue of, of cold air. Uh, I can show it here. Cold air protruding to the south. Then we have a cold front and a warm front here. And on the, south, uh, uh, the central part and the eastern part of Europe, we have an advection of warm air. What you see here is in blue the thermal front parameter indicating the front, and the red line is the, is the temperature in 500 hectopascal. So you see here over Italy and also reaching to Austria very warm temperatures in the, in the mid troposphere and higher troposphere. Um, this, the green lines, same, same date, same satellite image. The green lines are the, uh, the height of the 500 hectopascal surface, and the marron or brown lines are the streamlines in 300 hectopascal, clearly indicating uh, advection of warm air from the south in higher regions. That's why mostly the mountain stations indicated new records in, in temperatures. So then in the next slide I picked out some uh, uh, climate records showing the high temperatures and then the following cold air outbreak which we had the, on, the, on the next weekend. So this is, I picked out um, records from the four corners of Austria, from the western, eastern, northern, and southern part. Let's start with, with Innsbruck. This is in the western part of Austria. We have here clearly an, a maximum of the temperature, which indicates abnormal warm temperatures on the weekend, 19 to 21 October. Um, this is also due to the fern effect. And then later we have this cold air outbreak um, which is clearly visible here in the, in the temperature recording. Uh, to further explain this graphic, this, this line here is the um, mean temperature uh, during the year 2000, uh, 19, 1971 to 2000 and the upper and lower li lines are the coldest and warmest mean temperatures recorded on that day. So for Salzburg, in the, as a station for the more northern part of Austria, but still in the vicinity of the, of the mountains, you also see the 
quite high temperatures on the weekend mentioned, followed by very low temperatures one week later. Here in both we have the the stream streaming from the south and we are for Innsbruck inside the Alps, for Alps Salzburg we are in the north part northern part of the Alps, but in both effects we have the Föhn effect which increase furthermore the temperatures. Now we come to Vienna. The mountains here we have some mountains but they are not so high that hence uh, and we are on, hence no fern effect, and we are on a on a lower level. We are only on uh, 200 meters height. So the, the the weekend mentioned before, which was very warm for Innsbruck and Salzburg, is not so warm. Was not so warm in in Vienna. Nevertheless, the cold air outbreak was was really sensible also in Vienna. So it, the cold air outbreak affected all Austria. Uh, not so the warm warm weekend before. For the southern part I chose Klagenfurt which is also in the Alps, located in the Alps showing quite high temperatures and the, the following weekend uh, very low temperatures. So I go back to, to ePort showing you three days, always 12 UTC. Um, this is now the weekend with the cold air um, outbreak which affected uh, Austria and, and all cent Central Europe and, and Eastern Europe. Um, starting with Saturday, the 27th October, I selected the Airmas RGB and uh, numerical field, the temperature in 500 hectopascal. So you he see here the tongue of cold air arriving over over Norway and France protruding to the south. That's what Christina already explained. Twenty-four hours later, this cold air protruded even more to the south, to the region of uh, the Genoa. The, um, the low is cut off and forming a separate low. On the fore side of this, uh, this low, some moist moist and cold air is protruded to the north. Maybe I can show it here to the north and reaching reaching Austria. So we have humidity from the south and we have uh, the cold air from this, this trough. The second that the third day shows you a well developed Mediterranean low. Uh, always already in a very developed stage um, and this is the, the final stage of the cutoff process. So what were the consequences? I have some nice images here. We had a lot of snow in Austria which is rather unusual for October so um, people had to remove all that snow uh, as you can see here in the images, the question is now how unusual is this type of early winter onset, this snow cover? How, how often does it happen in Austria? Um, or more precisely as I wrote here, how frequent is a closed snow cover with a snow cover height of at least one centimeter in October? So I picked out here two stations. We had snow in Vienna in October in this event. Two centimeters of snow recorded at the Hohe Warte. This is the weather station in Vienna, which is located on a small hill, so a little bit higher than the rest of the city. But um, two centimeters of snow in October is quite unusual. And you can see here it happened only four times since 1940. In Innsbruck, which is located here, um, Innsbruck Airport, uh, a little, located also a little bit higher, 570 meters. Um, this is also not so frequent. We had it eight times uh, snow cover in October since 1951. So this is a phenomenon which n not happens very often. So in my next slide, you see a map of Austria, and I would like you to indicate where do you expect um, snow in October to happen very rarely. 
so not often but rarely because in the mountains on very high mountains uh, yes thank you that's that's okay in the high mountains you have you can find uh, snow all over the year it's, it, it's melting but never disappearing but where are the regions where you would expect snow rarely in October please mark it with a star Well, I can see that the stars mainly locate in the regions which are flat and lower. So one of the of the reasons why you don't have snow in October is the lower altitude, as you indicate here. Thank you very much. Um, so altitude is very important if you have snow or not in October. So I erase now your stars because I want to make my own now. Um, I have picked out some regions in Austria for for the currents in, of snow in October and I will put a yellow star. I will start with Salzburg. Salzburg is the city is here but all the city is here but all this this uh, area here is the the country of Salzburg and if we go to the northern part this this part here called the Flachgau so such a snow event happens once every 10 years. In the southern part of the re Salzburg region, here in, in the Lungau, um, such an event happens every second year. So this is clearly a, f uh, a fact that the altitude is dominating the occurrence of snow or not. You, you put many, many crosses here near Graz and in Klagenfurt, in Styria and in Carinthia, here snow occurrence is not happening very often. Only once in 15 years. So you are quite right to, to mark these regions. Another effect of altitude is clearly visible in the northern part of Austria. We have here an elevated region called the Mühlviertel and the Waldviertel. Also here, the snow occurrence is not so rare. Once every four years, we have snow in these higher regions in the north. In the valley of the Alps, like here, the Inn Valley and, and Salzach Valley, snow occurrence is quite common in October, once every second year. But one thing you have not, you, have, you were not doing crosses, is this, is the Danube Valley. Here along the Danube, um, the snow occurrence in October is very rare, once every 50 years only. The reason is that near the Danube you have the strong influence of the warm water, um, which um, uh, hinders the, the development of the, of the snow cover for, for, a, for, for longer time, for, or for an early time. So, I, I will continue now with the second event, that's the same event uh, Christina already mentioned. It was the heavy precipitation event in, in Tuscany and it also affected Austria, mainly the southern part of Austria. Here I had some photos from this event. Uh, it was, um, the precipitation was very heavy and uh, there were some inundations as you can see here uh, and roads were swept away and uh, landslides happened which are hindering the, the, the cars to, to, to go along the roads. Um, how did the models see this event? They were quite well represented in the models. Here we that's one of the models we use in our Austria, the Alaros 5, um, and this is a forecast of 25, of, of 54 hours uh, for Sunday evening, showing clearly that there will be a precipitation maximum in the southern part of Austria. Uh, another forecast chart from the same model shows that uh, the, that's, that's the 24-hour accumulated rain for the whole 
day of the 12th November shows that there will be a maximum of precipitation over Slovenia and also affecting Carinthia, Tyrol a little bit, Styria, and in the northern part of, of the uh, northeastern part of the of the country, the precipitation amounts will not be that high, mainly affecting the southern part. And this is also due to orographic reasons, because you have the Alps and the air masses are lifted and lose lose the precipitation, lose the water amount. So let's have a look at the e-port. Christina already showed some images of that day. I will concentrate on the day before the strong event. That's the 11th November. Here in the day microphysics RGB. And you clearly see uh, a frontal cloud band, high reaching cloud band with, with rain inside. Um, if you look at the severe store RGB, storm RGB, you even get more information. You see from the shape of the clouds here over Italy that they are convective, but there's also some embedded convection as you can see here with the yellow color. And also on here some some convection showing it by the, shown by the yellow color. So it is a frontal cloud band bringing rain, but also with convection inside. The next image show you the Estefax image that's already been shown also by Christina. You see that the values of Estefax are quite high, indicating that there is some convective activity inside. Here is also some convective activity outside Estefax, but mainly, mainly in this region. So the next e-port, the next uh, five e of no sorry, three e-port slides will show you some precipitation products overlaid to the satellite images. This is the now casting SAF product, the precipitation probability for the 11th, 12th UTC, and you clearly see that there are high probabilities for rain arriving from the south, even red and orange colors, which mark. Uh, uh, probability of higher than 60%, so you can almost be sure that there's uh, precipitation inside this cloud band. Another product I want to show is, uh, sorry, I think I, I was jumping over one, I have to go back. Uh, oh, it's missing in the slides, sorry, there there is one missing, maybe it's here, no. One of the one of the slides is missing. Sorry, I wanted to show the convective rainfall rate. I just have to explain it orally because you don't see it. The convective rainfall rate is also a product from the now casting stuff, and which shows you only the convective situation, the convective rainfall, and it gets the situation quite good. So the third product, which you can see here again, is the is an MPEF product from Umetsat. This is a combined product, the MPA, multi-sensor precipitation uh, estimate, which shows quite good convective situations, but stratiform um, precipitations is not well represented. So this, this is one of the products which shows you some hints of precipitation, not very strong, but they are here, um, of precipitation uh, for the convective areas. So to finish some uh, numerical fields, you see that the, the, the humidity is very high. Here in 700 hectopascal, we have very high humidity values in that region. And also, this is the omega field, uh, very strong updraft. So lifting air mass, which is also favora favorable for uh, um, increasing rain rate. Let's go to the next day. This is the 12th November, which this was the day where the heavy precipitation occurred in Austria in the southern part. It was, as I have shown you before, well uh, represented in the model fields. So the meteor alarm also issued a warning for this region, for, for Slovenia and for the southern part of Austria, for Tyrol and for Carinthia. On the on the our uh, 
weather service homepage, we have a even more detailed uh, warning site where you can see that the southern parts of Austria is strongly affected. It's colored in red, which means that this is an, an uh, event which happens only once in two or three years. So very, very rare. Carinthia was affected very strongly in Tyrol. Tyrol is, this is, this is Tyrol, but this is also part of Tyrol. Um, again, um, for the 12, 12 UTC, some satellite images. Uh, this is, again, the now casting soft product, the probability of precipitation. And you can here, you see, can, this is an analysis, of course, and you can see the shape of this cloud here is quite similar to what we have seen in the Alaro 5 model field, um, showing the accumulated precipitation over 24 hours. So the models were quite good in getting the situation, and the 12 UTC satellite images shows you where the precipitation is really occurring. So the next slide shows you again the humidity in 700 hectopascal. This is something which was expected and, and represents quite well the situation. So to finish with, I picked out some stations, uh, five stations, to show the precipitation amount which occurred during this period. I picked out Lienz, uh, Tirol, I picked out Zeltweg, Graz, Eisenstadt and Vienna, five stations. And I will start with Lienz, the first one. Um, we will concentrate now on the rain amount on the bottom of the, the chart. As you can see here, there was quite a lot of precipitation during that event on 12th uh, November. But uh, this singular effect has been preceded a week before also by very high precipitation. So the following seven days later precipitation event made the situation even more uh, um, worse because the, the 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 earth and and the vegetation was already saturated by the precipitation, but a strong precipitation event occurring one week before. So all the precipitation which fell seven days later could not be absorbed by by vegetation and the ground. You clearly see here the high amount of precipitation, and then therefore the landslides and the inundations. The next stations I picked out was Zeltweg, more to the east. Here you can clearly see that the previous um, precipitation event was much stronger than the one seven days later, but even the lesser rate of precipitation is too much if the soil is already saturated. Then we go to, to Graz, and you see that the more we come to the east, the lesser the precipitation event was. And we continue with the most eastern part of Austria, Eisenstadt, with very low precipitation. So we had no really problems with this event on 12th in Eisenstadt, which is near the lake of Neusiedl, Neusiedler See. And Vienna, this is the last slide I can show. It's not even worth mentioning the, this heavy precipitation rate did not occur compared to Styria, uh, Carinthia, and Tyrol. So in the eastern part of Austria, we did not even um, realize that this was such a heavy and, and awful event. So thank you very much for listening to me.